Thousands of meters below the sunlit waves lies a world that almost defies belief. No light, no warmth, no air, just crushing pressure, boiling vents, and total darkness. Yet, it's alive. Deep beneath the ocean's surface exists an ecosystem so alien that if we discovered it on another planet, we'd call it extraterrestrial life. This is the story of the hidden architects of the deep, the microbes that build entire worlds in eternal darkness, and what they might tell us about life beyond Earth. The architects of extremophiles, deep sea microbes. Let's start where sunlight ends, around 11,000 meters down, in places like the Mariana Trench and along hydrothermal vent fields on the mid-ocean ridges. Down here, temperature swings from freezing to over 400 degrees Celsius, and the pressure can crush steel like paper. Yet, somehow, life not only survives, it thrives. These are the extremophiles, organisms so specialized that they've turned the impossible into routine. The deep sea microbial world is dominated by two ancient domains of life, bacteria and archaea. To most people, they're invisible. But to scientists, they're the architects of an entire hidden biosphere. Alex, meet the builders of darkness, microbes that eat chemicals instead of sunlight. No chlorophyll, no photosynthesis. They power the ocean from below. Wait, they don't need the sun at all. How do they even get energy down there? They invented a trick called chemosynthesis. Instead of light, they use energy from chemicals, hydrogen sulfide, methane, ammonia. Pouring out of the Earth's crust, they turn poison into life. In other words, these microbes are chemical alchemists. At hydrothermal vents, where superheated water rich in minerals spews into the sea, they capture energy from chemical reactions, building sugars and organic molecules the same way plants do, but without sunlight. It's not photosynthesis, it's chemosynthesis, and it may have been the first metabolism on Earth. Survival Strategies of the Impossible To survive in the deep ocean, these microbes have evolved molecular armor. Their enzymes, the tiny biological machines that make life possible, are engineered to function under 1,000 atmospheres of pressure. Their membranes contain exotic lipids that stay flexible in freezing water but don't rupture under crushing force. Some produce antifreeze proteins that stop ice crystals from forming. Others thrive near boiling vents where metals precipitate out of the water like smoke, creating the iconic black smokers that look like underwater volcanoes. So they've adapted to extremes we can't even imagine. But how? Doesn't DNA just fall apart at those temperatures? Good question. Their DNA repair systems are some of the strongest on Earth. They've evolved to rebuild themselves constantly. Some archaeal species can even change the shape of their proteins to survive thermal shock. It's life rewritten at the molecular level. And these adaptations don't just fascinate biologists. They inspire biotechnology, from pressure-resistant industrial enzymes to new drug candidates extracted from deep-sea extremophiles. Ecosystems built on alien chemistry. If microbes are the builders, then hydrothermal vents are their cities, sprawling ecosystems rising from the seafloor like glowing metropolises in the dark. Around black smokers, life congregates in surreal abundance. Giant tube worms, blind shrimp, and ghostly crabs form colonies powered entirely by microbial energy. These animals don't eat plants or sunlight-based food. They host symbiotic bacteria inside their bodies that perform chemosynthesis for them. This worm has no mouth, no stomach, and yet it thrives, because the microbes living inside it act as chefs, turning hydrogen sulfide into energy-rich food. Nature's weirdest restaurant. Exactly. Each vent is like a self-contained planet, where life rewrote the rules. Cold seeps, the silent gardens. Further away from volcanic activity are the cold seeps, areas where methane and hydrocarbons leak slowly from the seafloor. Here, microbial communities perform an equally remarkable feat. They oxidize methane deep underground, providing food for clams, mussels, and tube worms that blanket the ocean floor like fields of alien flowers. Recent discoveries in the Gulf of Mexico and the Arctic Ocean revealed vast methane-fueled ecosystems, expanding our understanding of life's tenacity. And yet, even these visible colonies are only the surface of something far more mysterious. The dark biosphere, life beneath the seafloor. Beneath the ocean floor lies what scientists now call the dark biosphere, a subterranean realm of microbes living in porous rocks and sediments, kilometers below the seabed. It's estimated that these deep biosphere microbes make up 70% of Earth's total microbial biomass, meaning most of the planet's life isn't above ground or in the oceans, but underneath them. They move so slowly that a single cell may divide only once every hundred years, yet they persist, forming vast microbial networks that interact chemically with the planet's crust. 
Think about it, Alex. The majority of life on Earth doesn't even know sunlight exists. So, we're not the main act. We're just the surface decoration. Exactly. Down there, life doesn't just survive. It defines the limits of existence. Astrobiology's new playbook, Lessons from the Deep. When astrobiologists search for life beyond Earth, they no longer only look for liquid water at Earth-like temperatures. They look for chemistry, and deep-sea ecosystems teach us to look for chemical disequilibria as a fingerprint of life. Europa, Enceladus, and even distant rogue planets with subsurface oceans could host hydrothermal systems just like ours. There's no need for light, only energy gradients created by planetary geology. That changes the map of habitability completely. Alex, imagine an ocean moon with a crust of ice and a seafloor with vents. The same menu of chemicals, the same feast for chemosynthetic microbes. If life began here on Earth without sunlight, why wouldn't it emerge elsewhere under similar conditions? So we've been looking in the wrong place, and or at least too narrowly. The universe might be teeming with life that doesn't need a star. Exactly. The deep biosphere reframes every assumption. Life can be slow, fractured, and chemical first. It may be abundant in places we once dismissed as barren. Clues to early Earth, a living time capsule. Deep sea microbes don't just inform astrobiology, they are living fossils. Many archaeal and bacterial lineages in vent fields are evolutionarily ancient, their metabolisms echoing Earth's earliest biochemistry. On a primordial Earth, a world before oxygen filled the atmosphere, chemosynthesis likely powered early ecosystems. Studying modern vent microbes gives us a time machine to understand how life first harnessed energy and built molecular complexity from volcanic gases and mineral-laden water. Look here. Genes involved in sulfur metabolism and methane oxidation show up in the deepest branches of life. That's fossil evidence written in DNA. These organisms preserve the grammar of early metabolism. So, they're a biochemical archive. By decoding their genomes, we're reading chapters of life's origin story. And those chapters are still being edited. New discoveries rewrite timelines, showing that life's capacity for innovation began very early and that our planet's habitability is far more flexible than classical models. Technology that brings the abyss to light. If the deep ocean is a library, we need better reading lamps. Fortunately, technology is sprinting forward. Autonomous underwater vehicles and remotely operated vehicles now carry high-resolution cameras, in-situ chemical sensors, and manipulators that collect fragile biological samples without crushing them. New soft sampling arms mimic the gentlest human touch, preserving microbial consortia exactly as they live. In-situ DNA sequencers are miniaturizing, enabling scientists to sequence genomes on the seafloor minutes after sampling, rather than waiting months back on shore. This transforms discovery from delayed archaeology to real-time biology. Metabolomics and single-cell genomics let us read not just who's there, but what they're doing, which enzymes they use, which molecules they manufacture, how they talk chemically to each other, and to larger animals. Remember when oceanography meant a CTD cast and a scoop? Now we're deploying arrays of nanosensors, autonomous landers, and DNA sequencers. We can watch microbial metabolism pulse in real time. And the data, petabytes of chemical, genetic, and imaging data, will let us model entire vent ecosystems as living systems instead of static snapshots. Biotechnology, medicine, and industry. The implications of vent biology aren't just theoretical. Their pressure-stable enzymes revolutionize industrial chemistry by enabling reactions at extreme conditions. Antimicrobial compounds from deep microbes offer new drug leads in the antibiotic resistance crisis. Extremophile membranes inform nanotechnology and material science for sensors and high-performance materials. Even carbon sequestration strategies look to deep microbial pathways that lock carbon into minerals on geologic timescales. The abyss may hold keys to sustainable technologies that keep our planet habitable. Ethics, conservation, and the right to discover. There's a moral dimension to deep exploration. These ecosystems have no voice. They are ancient and delicate. As industry eyes seabed mining, and as states claim exclusive economic zones, the pressure on vent communities intensifies. Scientists argue for precautionary protection, marine protected areas around vents, strict impact assessments, and open data sharing so research benefits humanity rather than private gain. Science flourishes when knowledge is shared, and when those who profit from discovery also fund protection. If the abyss moved you, 
Share this video, support oceanographic research, and pressure policymakers to protect deep sea habitats. Dive deeper with Science Unlocked. Subscribe for weekly journeys into the cutting edge of science.